All right, everyone. Welcome back to another day of human physiology. Today's topic is coronary artery disease. Now, before we can jump into learning about this disease and the signs and symptoms and treatments and our uh, scholarly article on this, uh, we really need to review just some basic uh, circulation and a little bit of physiology of the heart. So over here on the right, you can see this image of the heart. And this is going to help us understand why we needed to review this before we get into the disease. Um, so we know that the heart is always beating, right? If the heart stops, you stop, right? You're dead. Okay. And one reason this is possible um, is because there are lots of mitochondria in the heart cells. There's 40% um, of the cell, like the volume, so the space that is taken up by those cells is actually the mitochondria. So this is a significant portion of the cells dedicated to mitochondria, which allows for that constant beating because, you know, mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, if it has lots of powerhouses, it has a lot of power and can continuously beat. Now, those mitochondria don't work. Well, they would still work, but other complications would arise um, due to the process of generating ATP and things if they don't receive blood and oxygen and have CO2 carried away. And now how the heart does this so during systole, it's flexed, right? And that shoots blood from the ventricles into the aorta, into this aorta arc, aortic arch. Now, while that those muscles are clenched, right, there's going to be so much blood pressure in these cells that blood actually won't be entering it. And look at how close it is to the base, to this opening, right? So blood is going to be rushing out of there, and it is not going to be entering this. Now, it is incredible because this arch is going up, right? During um, diastole, the relaxation, the blood that is in this arch actually falls down and then goes into these coronary arteries. Now, just a quick reminder. Remember, if you were to open up, if you had somebody on an operation table and you were to open up their chest cavity, this is what you would be looking at, okay? So the right is the patient's right, not the right you see, just so you don't get confused that the on your rights and lefts while looking at images of the heart, okay? So, um, yeah, and so these coronary arteries, these are where our topic for today is taking place. So arthrosclerotic uh, coronary artery disease, or CAD for short, is a narrowing of these arteries on the heart. Excuse me. So what's happening is there is a plaque buildup actually in the lining, in the walls of the arteries. Okay, and it's usually the plaque usually has a lipid rich core and um, it's actually underneath this first layer known as the endothelium. Endo meaning in, so the inside of the wall and we're behind that layer. Okay, and if you look at this cross section down here, you can see like this person has um, some pretty late stages of coronary artery disease because look at how like, you can see where that is supposed to be, where the opening is supposed to be, and it's pretty close to approaching being halfway filled. So that is a lot of blood flow restriction that has occurred because of this plaque buildup here. So now that we know what the coronary artery disease is, we can start to look at some of the signs and symptoms of it. 
So in the early stages, it is there are some vascular spasms, okay, so some abnormal um, narrowing of the coronary arteries, okay. Then as we progress, we get, start to develop the atherosclerosis, which is can lead to occlusions or complete blockages of the heart. And then, so we're starting to b build up that plaque and narrow those veins or the, those arteries in the heart. And then we get, we start getting more um, complications um, by way of the thromboembolism, which is the plaque has built up so much that it has completely blocked the artery and the pressure of the heart has actually caused those vessels to rupture, um, which can cause bleeding and can really um, cause some other complications. Okay, and then if you know if plaque's being built up in the heart, it's not too much of a leap to say that elsewhere in the body there is plaque being built up, and that is known as peripheral arterial artery disease. Uh, and then there's also the presentation of angina pectoris, or pain in the chest, or in your pec region, and then, of course, heart attack. So I have a short little video here for us to watch. Okay, and many of you, I'm sure, are going into the medical field or some relation to the medical field. And so from the Mayo Clinic, I have this really great video, and I just want you to notice how the doctor interacts with you, assuming that you are the patient that is seeking out information. We'll just watch a minute or two of this. Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky, a cardiologist at Mayo Clinic, and I'm here to answer some of the important questions you may have about coronary artery disease. Many small changes can lead to great benefit over time. Remember that nothing you do to improve your health is ever too little, and nothing you do to improve your health is ever too late. Cholesterol is always involved in the initiation of the narrowing of the arteries to the heart, and every plaque or narrowing of your arteries contains cholesterol. It is essential to control the cholesterol in order to optimally lower your chance of a heart attack. All right, so I just really liked that video. You guys can watch it um, on your own time, but I just wanted you to see you know, how the doctor interacts and how positive he is. I think a lot of times, I mean, I've experienced this with my own doctors. Like I go in and I tell them a problem and and they just, you know, kind of brush it off and say, well, it's because you're a diabetic. I'm, I'm a type 1 diabetic and sometimes I feel like they just, like that's just an easy cop out for them when really, you know, they probably just need to tell me to exercise more and my problem would be solved. Um... I'm not saying that exercise is a catch-all, but he. I really like that the small things are never too little or too late. Okay. Oops. Get out of here. There we go. Okay. So we are on to our um, scholarly source today, and I just previously mentioned that I am a type 1 diabetic, so I thought this would be kind of an interesting uh, topic here because um, there are a few things you know on the previous slide we saw a bunch of ways that that um, you can notice or diagnose um, cardiac artery disease or coronary artery disease um, but in this article, they actually used one that wasn't mentioned previously. They actually use the ankle brachial index. So what they do is they take the blood pressure in your ankle and a blood pressure in your arm, you know, the like 
classic place where if you think you're going to have your blood pressure taken, it's in your arm. That's brachial. That's the brachial location. And they actually formulate an index on this to um, uh, help. It, it's like an indication that there might be some problems, some narrowing. So if you have a low index here, that means there is some narrowing of arteries or blockages most likely somewhere in your legs. Now, this is a good indication of um, the peripheral artery disease, but with diabetics, it actually was shown in this study to have a pretty significant tie to coronary artery disease. Now, this did take place in India, so the um, database it, um, of testes is coming from people in India, and coronary artery disease is actually considered an epidemic in India right now. Well, at the time, in 2016. Um, but there are, you know, we, in that video, you, you saw that he mentioned cholesterol. Cholesterol is always going to be tied to it, but diabetes and coronary artery disease actually have similar vasculopathy characteristics. And so it's kind of interesting to look at some things that diabetics present and how that could be tied to a secondary disease. Um, so if you look here, this HbA1c, okay, that is a good way to look at it is the average blood sugar of the diabetic over the last three months about. Okay, so here a 9.6 with and going up um, one and a half points or down one and a half points, that's a pretty high A1C. A really, really well maintained um, diabetic will have an A1C of seven. Um, a normal, like a normal non-diabetic can have it in the sixes. So this number is really pretty high. And you can see over here that the p-value on this and its um, link to, and the association between um, coronary artery disease is pretty high. Right, that value is pretty high. Okay. Um, so, diabetics have some. I mean, I didn't know this. Nobody had ever told me. My doctors never did. So I'm actually kind of appreciative of having read this, knowing that I could need to have checkups done for coronary artery disease in the future. I mean, I'm sure my doctors probably are aware of that and know, but now I know. So now I'm in control of my health, which I think provides a lot of comfort to people. And really, th that's why human physiology is such a great class, because you get to be so informed about your health and the processes and things you need to look out for in your life. So thanks for coming.